and a very warm welcome back to the channel today. If you like aircraft orders, well, you're in luck, as there certainly hasn't been any shortage of them in the past week, and it's time to recap those orders. Let's begin with Korean Air who have announced their intent to significantly grow their wide-body long-haul offering by introducing 33 additional state-of-the-art A350 jets across the family. I say additional for a very key reason that I will get into. In total, the airline has committed to 27 A350 1000s and 6 A350 900s as part of an investment that is valued at USD 13.7 billion measured by list price value. List price values indicates the prices at their listing value for the general public and media. However, you'll probably get sick and tired of me saying this, but remember, airline customers will rarely pay the full list price, with substantial discounts attached to purchase commitments, and these discounts are never publicly disclosed. Korean Air is on course to continue gradually retiring aircraft types that are showing signs of age, and the purchase of 33 new Airbus wide bodies will allow this process to continue. Once delivered and operating, Korean Air believes the A350s can fly to locations such as New York from Seoul, among many others. But if you really want to generalize it, it's just going to offer them greater flexibility across the long haul market. Additionally, with now more aircraft at its disposal, the view of further cities being available will also be considered, so expect their network to expand. The A350 is deemed Deemed a fantastic aircraft, especially for its operations. However, the aircraft will generally be necessary for the next era of Korean Air, which sees the integration of Asiana Airlines. You may recall at the beginning of this video, I said that Korean Air would look towards growing its wide-body long-haul offering. That is, because when the Korean Air and Asiana tie-up is finally confirmed, A350s will move towards Korean Air. So think of this as an extension on those ones. This tie-up is seen to be crucial for long-term stability, competitiveness and more within the market. In recent years, the pair have gotten the necessary regulatory approval from many regulators. However, they still await the formal yes from the United States. While much needs to be sorted once the tie-up is confirmed, the A350-1000's ability to carry up to 410 passengers in a three-class configuration not only means it's the largest aircraft in the series but will also bring many opportunities within the company for the future. The arrival of the 350 will be highly anticipated, at least the new batch. However, other aircraft types from Airbus and Boeing will also be delivered over the next decade and will equally support the company's new era. The Japan Airlines, meanwhile, confirmed plans to introduce new Airbus and Boeing aircraft in an attempt to enhance its international and domestic operations further. As part of the latest commitment, the airline will welcome 21 A350 900s, 11 A320 Neos, these from Airbus. In addition to a purchase with Airbus, the airline will secure 10 Boeing 787-9s. The airline says the latest purchase is part of its broader fleet renewal efforts as it looks to streamline and introduce newer, more efficient planes to replace aging series. Japan Airlines adds that the A350-900 that it has purchased will actually be deployed on its international network. At this stage, the A350s, you may recall, form an essential part of the domestic fleet. However, these new aircraft will change the trends as more of a focus is placed on the international flights. Interestingly, that was 20 A350s that will be for the international network, and that means there's one single unit left over. This will be configured domestically and will actually replace the A350-900 that was lost in January 2024 during a landing incident, or for better words, destroyed. The 787-9 is expected to seamlessly fit into their existing and large fleet of Dreamliners, with the 10 additional units easing pressure on the fleet and obviously opening up better possibilities. Japan Airlines notes that once delivered, the new units will be focused on international markets also. The primary focus will be on regions such as Asia and India, which obviously being closer to home, are still regions that are deemed to have high growth in the future. 
Lastly, they'll also be focusing on North America. The A321neo, meanwhile, is deemed to be important for their Tokyo Haneda operation. It'll therefore be strictly focused on domestic and intra-Asia flying. JAL says the A350-900s that are configured for international services will be expected to be delivered from financial year 2027, the 7879s from financial year 2027 also, and lastly the A321neos from financial year 2028. They will therefore of this latest batch technically be the last unit to be delivered or the last of a new aircraft type to be delivered. That's going to conclude today's order recap. If you have any thoughts, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your latest news.